Hi, I'm Michaela, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, what we're doing is a repotting and Q&A. So I asked probably about a week ago on Instagram and YouTube if anyone had any questions. I actually got a lot, so thank you so much if you asked a question. So I'm just gonna be repotting um, a plant and then some propagations that have rooted and I'll be answering questions while I do. So the first question is, was there ever a plant you sold that you regret? So the answer to this one actually is surprising to me as well. I, I was sure that there has to be a plant that I regret selling, but I thought about this for several days and there's actually not I don't regret any of the plants that I've sold I don't I don't actively miss them like I do there are plants that I think about and I just like wonder how they're doing but I actually can't think of any that I wish I hadn't sold so I was pretty surprised by my answer to that one also the next question is if you could have a superpower what would it be I've been thinking about this one a lot too and I'm gonna have to go with flying. I So I am afraid of heights and I can't climb a six foot ladder, but I think that if I could fly, the benefits would outweigh my distaste for heights because I think I could save a lot of money that way. Um, I could do a lot of traveling and you could just see all kinds of stuff. So, I think I would get over my fear of heights if I were able to fly and it would be really handy. Also you could just like haul off and fly to Paris or something one day just you know you just could do that so that would be that would be really cool. I wish I could fly but I can't. <laughs> okay so the next question is what is your biggest wish list plant? So that would be a variegated billetier. Those, oh my goodness, those are so beautiful. I would love to have one of those, but they are, they are pretty spendy and I'm not really looking to, I'm not really looking to do that right now. So, but yeah, variegated billetier is my biggest wish list plant. Okay, now I'm gonna be repotting this philodendron tortum. Should have done that sooner. Look at these roots. Okay, the next question is, please introduce your new pup and backstory. So I did this in my last video, but I'm definitely going to show her here, but she, she cannot repot plants with me at this point in her life. It is. <laughs> It's just not in the cards. So my new puppy, her name is May. She is a little rescue dog. So about, I guess about a month ago, one day we, so it was probably like five, six o'clock at night. And I was looking out the window because there was somebody like crouching behind my car and it was my husband. And I couldn't figure out what the heck he was doing. He was just like sitting on the ground behind my car. So I went out there and he was like, telling me to be quiet and like be careful. And I saw there's a little animal underneath the car. Um, I thought it was a cat at first, but it was May. And she was in kind of rough shape, honestly. She was really hungry and thirsty. She was just like covered with fleas and ticks. So she was in pretty rough shape. And um, we took her to see if they, if she had a microchip, no microchip, um, animal control and all the shelters were full and nobody was like reporting a dog like her missing. And then we, there's like a local Facebook group called Lee's Lost and Found through like, I think it's a local news station. 
Um, we put her on there thinking maybe some, like, we figured by the looks of her, like, she's a really pretty dog. She's really sweet. Like, somebody's got to be looking for this dog, right? But, no. Nobody came forward. Um, somebody did post that there was, like, a whole litter of them at a restaurant nearby, and they tried to approach them, and they just scattered. So, uh, unfortunately, I think somebody dumped a litter which happens a lot around here so that was really really sad and it just we were kind of like waiting for somebody to come forward for a long time and i just was eventually like this dog has to see a vet like she needs some medical attention so yeah she is our dog now and i'm really excited about it we weren't looking to get a dog, but she found us, and yeah, we, we fell in love with her. Okay, the next question is, what is your favorite plant? I don't know. I It changes all the time, but I think the ones I keep coming back to are Anthurium forgetii. I There's just something about them. I really like those round leaves, and then I always, really love a good fiddly fig so yeah probably a toss-up between anthurium forgetii and a fiddly fig okay so the next question is what did you do before you had a nursery if i had to guess marketing um actually not marketing but i'm gonna take that as a compliment before i started my plant shop i worked in interior design is commercial interior design and I would like to one day return to the field of interior design but I don't know there's also just like that's an industry in which there is a lot of waste and I don't know that really upset me so there's I mean there's a lot of things I don't like about that field and I I don't I want to figure out like a good way to I don't know approach it I I want to start my own business in that realm but now is not the right time for that and there are some things I want to figure out about that first like I don't know my passion aside from plants of course is historic architecture and like old houses I just love them and they get torn down so often and just also, I don't think that you should need to spend 10 grand to have a nice kitchen. Like, interior design really needs to be accessible to normal people, not just people who are extremely wealthy. And that's kind of what, in the area I live in at least, that's what most of the interior design businesses seem to cater to. And that's just not my vibe so I would like to figure out a good way to combine those two things but like the way the economy is and the real estate market is not really the time for me to be trying to start the business I want to start there so I'll, I do intend to return to that one day but we will see where life takes me because you really truly never know oh on that note interior design what are the paint names of all your wall colors first of all thank you for liking my paint color choices uh there's uh, some of them are kind of bold i guess you could say but they are oh and i wrote them down and i'll show you up on the screen too what these actually look like so you know what i'm talking about Okay, so the room I'm in now, you can't see it, but there's like a there's like a wainscoting of beadboard and then on the top is a wall color and the color on top is Benjamin Moore Ocean Tropic. The trim down here is just untinted Magnolia Home trim and cabinet paint. That is I I love that paint. It is very 
Okay, so we're very rough on paint around here with all the dogs and plants and I'm always moving furniture around and yeah, we're just always doing something so we need paint that's going to perform so and that is that's definitely a paint that is good for trim and cabinets. So the kitchen shiplap walls, that is Valspar Perfection. And then the kitchen cabinets is Valspar Midnight Bayou. And I definitely picked that for the name. And the living room was just a random mist tint jar that I found at Lowe's one day. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. But it is very, very close to Hale Navy. Um, the dining room, I don't really show a lot, but I don't know what that color is. I, I don't have the can of paint still and I don't remember. We painted that like five years ago when we bought this house and I don't remember. So yeah, thank you for liking my paint choices. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to this one and probably soak it or something, but I really want to start potting some of these up. The next question is what was the first plant you kept alive when you started your plant journey? And that is my philodendron Brazil. Um, before I got like really, really into plants, I was trying to keep stuff alive and I was, uh, you know, how, I mean, you know how it goes. I was just doing weird stuff, but the philodendron Brazil stuck with me the whole time and I still have it. And it's like, it's way bigger than it was and yeah it just put up with my nonsense when I did not know how to take care of plants but also kind of a fiddle leaf fig also kind of fits into that category as well and that's Gary because I was trying to well I was just put in charge of taking care of Gary before I was into plants and that's kind of what got me into plants so Fiddle Leaf Fig and Philodendron Brazil on that one. Okay, so the next question, oh, oh gosh, was what was your job path before you started selling plants? How long did it take you to get your business up and running and what were some of the struggles you encountered along the way? Um, so like I said, before that, my job path was interior design, which was also a redirect from my initial job path which was like human services and I worked in uh, for the state child support system in Colorado and that was a highly depressing field and I I am just way too like sensitive soft-hearted I guess to be able to do that kind of work I could not I just couldn't do that. So that was the initial uh, job path that I had. So yeah, I really, truly, if you would have told me 10 years ago, I would start a plant YouTube channel and like plant nursery, I would not have believed you at all. So you never know, you really never know. You just have to roll with the punches. So to get my business up and running, it there was probably a good year and a half behind the scenes before anybody saw anything. And I didn't tell anybody either. I, I don't know why. I definitely just kept it a secret. I told obviously like my husband and my close family, but like I didn't have any kind of social media going. I didn't tell. Uh, friends or anything. But it was a good year and a half. Um, there was a lot behind the scenes too. A lot um, that wasn't pretty. I didn't show because I don't know. I just couldn't at the time. But there were a lot of uh, struggles. Like so when we finally got the greenhouse up and moving learning how to care for plants in a greenhouse while I was still working was just it was a lot and I couldn't really manage both things mentally and then like I thought I was ready 
to like get stuff up and for sale and then I got thrips and it was the first time I had ever had thrips and I just like it was a lot there were uh, definitely a lot of tears shed during that time so yeah if you're thinking about starting a plant business I would absolutely recommend it but I mean it's not really quite as romantic as I've made it look, I'll admit. I mean, trying to start a business at all requires a lot from you mentally. And on top of that, caring for your product that is also a living thing is kind of another, I don't know, an added struggle, especially when you're like doing it by yourself. So it was hard, I won't lie, but it's been definitely worth it and I would not change it. Like I had to do that stuff to get where I'm at now and I feel like I'm in a really good place now, so. But there were a lot of times, like I won't lie, we were financially cutting it really close and I was like, maybe I should just stop this and just do what everyone else does, find a good job, and just not take any risks. But like, that's a very big part of taking risks is, I don't know, you don't often see what people sacrifice when they do things like this. And, cause it's hard to show, it really is. It's very vulnerable and people are very judgmental. So that's kind of why I didn't show a lot of that and just trying to figure out how to navigate it in itself was very new to me so yeah i heard a quote that always makes me think of that time in my life and it's you see what people have but you don't see what they sacrifice so like when you're seeing people who own small businesses and like have youtube channels and it just looks like their life is incredibly romantic and perfect it's not that way. There's definitely stuff behind the scenes that you're not seeing. And yeah, it's just something to remember. But no matter what path you take, you're sacrificing something. So for me, I am very happy with the choices I've made. So I got kind of existential there. Sorry if that's not your thing. So this is the last question. And it is three questions. Have you ever used cocoa peat as propagation medium? And what was your experience? How long do you wait to sell your newly potted propagations? And how old is Bernadette? Okay, so yes, I have used cocoa peat for propagation. And I had to look this up, I did not know. Cocoa peat and cocoa coir are the same thing. You notice I know how to say coir now. I've practiced a lot. Um, I liked it okay. I didn't love it. It worked the best for Hoyas for me. Um, yeah, it's just about like anything really. I didn't, I haven't bought any since I did my growing experiment. I used that in my uh, growing experiment video that I did. Like, what was it last summer, last fall? Um, I think it came in last other than Lekka, so nothing to write home about really. Um, how long do you wait to sell your newly potted propagations? So when I'm looking to sell propagations, I look for two things and that is active new growth. So like on this mid cutting, I will make sure that I see like something above the soil here and some roots along the bottom because I figure, because this is what I usually have done whenever I order plants, that people are going to repot immediately upon receiving whatever plant they buy from me. So I want it to be good and established and ready to be repotted. So usually that takes about, depending on the weather conditions, about a month after I pot them up. But I mean, there are some plants that you pot them up and that'll happen like a week after I put them into soil. So it really depends. There's definitely not 
it's not an exact science, but I really do try to, oh goodness, wait until it's good and established and I think it'll do well for you because it doesn't, like it doesn't help me to sell you a plant that you don't like and you're not happy with because I, when I have had problems with plants in the past, I will usually refund or replace a plant if it is not in good condition when the buyer receives it. So it does not pay for me to send a subpar plant to someone, which I get a lot of videos about my packaging on that packaging video I did a while back. And they ask, like, why are you packaging this so much? Like, you can't be making any money. But, oh gosh, this fell out. Similarly, I'm also not going to make any money if the plant dies before you even get it. So, that's definitely an expense that's very worth it to me. We got off on a tangent. Which I always do somehow. And how old is Bernadette? Which is really funny because I just happened to mention that in a video that I put out last week. And I filmed that like the same day that this person asked me this question. So that's funny. But Bernadette is about six and a half. So she's a little bit older for a giant dog, sadly. She will be seven in at the end of November. Also, nobody asked this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, Bernadette is also a rescue dog. She is a purebred St. Bernard, but she is a rescue. Um, and the story is pretty weird, honestly. So the individual that had her initially got like, was in the military and got like moved to Alaska. I think, and couldn't take her with him. So then she, hang on, this story always confuses me. So then somebody else was watching her for a while and my brother-in-law did not think that she was receiving the appropriate care. So then he ended up with her. I don't know how that happened. I think they're like, all right, well you take her then, but so they had another St. Bernard at the time. So he ended up giving us Bernadette as a wedding gift. What was it, six years ago? In like 2016 or 17. So yeah. I am one of those people I've never like actually bought a dog or like sought out a dog there's always they either find me or like someone tries to give me a dog that needs a home and I end up taking them that being said please don't try to give me any more dogs I'm overwhelmed with dogs at this point like I don't sleep anymore because <laughs> the dogs are doing something in the middle of the night so I have enough dogs, don't give me any dogs, please. But I, lo I love them very much. What was the plant that inspired your love of plants? So that is definitely Gary the Fiddle Leaf Fig. Um, I don't know, I just, it's probably pretty strange. I just feel like I had a special bond with that plant. <laughs> I don't, I know it's probably weird, but like, I just, there was something about that plant and like the fact that I just figured out how to take care of it and it was just happy and thriving. And it's so weird to me that it, that happened to be a fiddle leaf fig because people struggle with those so much, but that was like the first plant that I took care of well. So yeah, definitely Gary the fiddle leaf fig. What is a plant that you would never buy again? That is calatheas. No, no calatheas in this house. Um, Philodendron brantianum. 
They're really pretty, but I don't know. They just are too difficult for me to care for. Um, yeah, I think those are the two I would not ever buy again. <laughs> um, this one says, not a question, but tell us about the foot guy. <laughs> Um, if you saw, I don't know if you, if you watch my Instagram stories, you may have noticed that I have to be careful not to show my feet, which, oh god, they're showing now, aren't they? Okay, it's gonna be what it is. So, the foot guy, I assume a guy, I don't really, I don't actually know. This individual on Instagram had like, I don't know, it was a pretty generic username and like pictures and stuff and I don't know what, I don't remember what it was and I'm not gonna, like I'm not gonna, I don't know, throw this person under the bus but like, I got a DM on Instagram one day and it was just like somebody wanting to talk about plants and like I ended up talking to this person almost every single day about like plants and life etc like we became pretty good friends and I talked to this person all the time for like a few weeks at least and then out of the blue they say hey I've been working up the nerve for a long time but can you send me some pictures of your feet so, obviously, no, that's not, no. So just a heads up, if you're working up the nerve to ask me for pictures of my feet, the answer is gonna be no. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was a surprising, surprising facet of sharing one's life online. I just, it's so weird that they took the time to befriend me. Like, I wish they had just been like, yo. Well, do people say, say yo anymore? I sure do. But just, if you're gonna, if you've got a weird request like that, just come right out with it. Like, don't make friends with me so that it's really weird when, yeah, no. Okay, <laughs> moving on. How long have you been vegetarian? What made you decide to be vegetarian and biggest challenge? Okay, so this year in October is my 15 year vegiversary. So I've been vegetarian for 15 years now. Um, it was a pretty easy decision for me. I, it's not honestly something I can digest well. I don't like it. It doesn't seem like food to me. It just does not agree with me in any way. So it was very easy and it just like, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me in any way to eat meat. So yeah, the biggest challenge I think, yeah, so the biggest challenge with that is like people being judgmental or like when you go somewhere and there's nothing that I can eat and like asking places if they can prepare a dish without meat is often met with uh, not understanding. And I mean, the thing about like diet changes like that is if I haven't eaten meat in 15 years and I eat it, I absolutely will get very sick. So, like if somebody's asking for like dietary accommodation in food, most of the time it's not to upset you. It just is what it is. It's often for health reasons even. So yeah, um, and yeah, it's definitely, the biggest challenge is people being judgmental about it. Um, I think there's a lot of people who think I do it to be difficult or they just don't understand. I mean, I live in fairly rural Missouri, so I don't actually know anybody else who's a vegetarian. So, and I don't think I ever really have, to be honest. Like, it's not something that 
people do around here. So it is definitely different to people and I think that different scares people and they feel threatened by it. So I think that it has also taught me to be more understanding with people, like the questions that people will ask me, often they are not trying to upset me and reminding myself of that has been very important. So yeah, I wouldn't, I, I have no plans to change that. So yeah, I'm planning to be vegetarian for the long haul and I have enjoyed it, so yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was actually the last question. So hopefully that was fun for you guys to watch. Um, thank you so much for asking me questions. I'm surprised anyone had any questions. I really thought that no one was going to ask anything or I had this, well, I had this dream that someone asked a question and it was the only question I got and it was, who do you think you are? <laughs> so. Thank you for asking nice questions and questions. So anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Queen City Tropicals. And I will see you again soon.